Hello and welcome everybody to another Murders at Karlov Manor Draft. We are now in the top 20. We are in the top 20. We were in the teens yesterday, in yesterday's video, but uh, I guess some people jumped us, but now we're still in the top 20. We're still well, well on pace. We had a really sweet Boros deck, and hopefully we can continue on that and uh, maybe end in the teens again. Let's go for high teens, but of course, you never know how the drafts are going to shake out. Hopefully this goes well. Before this draft fires, I do want to shout out all the patrons of my new Patreon channel. If you wanted to support this channel in other means, you can check out my Patreon link in the description below. And now, let's hop straight in here and open. Sweetness? No. No sweetness. Okay. So what do we have? You know, one thing I haven't drafted in a while is the blue-red artifact stack with Detective Satchel. Gleaming Gear Drake is a premium uncommon in the set. One of the best uncommons in the set, and I really, really love this card. It's kind of the reason to go into blue-red. Um, other considerations here, Judith is also kind of cool, but I think Gleaming Geardrake is just better than Judith. So I think between the two of those, I would choose to go with um, the Gleaming Geardrake instead. Drag the Canal is okay. Shock, Markia Watch Phantom, Projector Inspector. A lot of decent playable cards out of this pack. But I think for me, I'm just going to take the Geardrake here. I think the safe pick, safe pick rather, is to take either the shock or the bite down in crime. But I'm gonna go with the gleaming gear Drake. I'm gonna see if blue red is open. This, like I said before, this is this is one of the best uncommons in the set. And I will take a little bit of a risk here. Oh, and we got past Kellen. How do you pass Kellen? This, I mean, it has to have been like a double rare pack, right? I mean, Kellen, Kellen is incredible. I'm gonna take it. Um. And I sadly, we might have to, you know, maybe we should have first picked Bite Down on Crime. But I'm going to take Kellen out of this pack. Um, there's a Meddling Youths, which is a decent hasty creature. Market Watch Phantom is great in an ag aggressive strategy. And a Topiary Panther is an okay card. I don't really look to take this early. But if you're looking to draft a lot of colors, the Panther is certainly good. But we're going to take Kellen here. So a couple of excellent, excellent cards here. Now the Gleaming Gear Drake, part of why it's so good is because you can play it on turn two. So, not as good of a card on the splash. And if I were to choose between the two cards, I would certainly go with the Kellen over the Gear Drake. Oh my god, why are we getting past all these rares? Why are we getting past all these rares? I've never been able, I've actually never played with this card. And I'm going to play with it now. But this pack is completely bonkers. There's a Buried in the Garden, Makeshift Binding, as other premium removal spells to play. But I'm going to take Intrude on the Mind. What a start here. Kellen into Intrude on the Mind? I mean, the person passing to us has got to just be like hard-forcing Boros or something. This card is amazing. In Reveal the top five cards of your library. Separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses to give you one of those piles and it comes with a body attached to it. So we're going to take Intrude on the Mind. I don't know where we're going to end up, but we're definitely blue. And we'll take it from there. <laughs> this... I am loving, loving this start, by the way. Okay, so now we actually have an interesting pick. There's a couple of good aggressive white creatures, which I'm largely going to ignore. I'm going to be looking at blue and green cards in particular. So for me, it's between Forensic Researcher and Nervous Gardener, I want to say. And early on, I'm just going to take um, Nervous Gardener here. It's a two drop. I do like the Researcher and Projector Inspector, but I like having the, the Nervous Gardener because this just... Um, opens the door for us to potentially splash some really powerful cards while also being a two drop. So trying to lock ourselves into potentially a blue green deck here. Not a big fan of Mistway Spy and I don't really care too much about splashing for the Crawl Whipcracker. So I'm just going to take a card that's just a fine thing to play in our deck. Always like having one copy of Vengeful Creeper, maybe even two. Um, killing Makeshift Bindings is also really nice. So this is the start that we have. This is the start that we have. Now, this pack is not especially strong. I don't really like Airtight Alibi in general. I prefer the other combat tricks like Get a Leg Up or even Fanatical Strength in general. I'll take a Fairy Snoop out of this pack. Just a face down card. If we're looking to be a little more controlling, um, certainly gets just value in the late game. Not, not the most exciting thing. Definitely not seeing a whole lot of red. Probably not playing this Gleaming Gear Drake. And here, we are happy taking Hedge Maze, an on-color dual land for our deck. Really happy about that. Now, one thing to note is we are not seeing a ton of green, maybe. But I'm still going to take the reasonable doubt here. Um, nothing else, really, that stands out out of that pack. And wow, what a pack. 
what a pack. Drag the Canal and Curious Cadaver also tabling out of this pack. But I think I'm just going to take the Projector Inspector. This actually does a surprising amount of work in the blue-green decks. Um, mostly because the blue-green decks typically have a lot of collect evidence cards. And Projector Inspector is just a really nice way to fill up your graveyard uh, and allow you to cast the collect evidence spells. Um, the Out Cold is also a decent option. But I think I prefer having the Projector Inspector there. All right, we took a public th thoroughfare, and now there's an out cold. So I'll take this over the Crocodile. We we don't know if we're going to be controlling or mid range or what have you. I do like having one copy of out cold, whereas I think a card like Undercover Crocodile is definitely replaceable. Well, okay, get one of each. I don't really want to play two out colds in most of my decks, so happy enough having one. And then we'll just take the Crocodile there, but. Things are off to a fantastic start for us here. Let's take a look at our curve. Yeah, no, this is looking this is looking really, really nice. Uh, we have the Nervous Gardener and the Thoroughfare Maze. So our mana is also looking good. We're setting ourselves up for a potentially good splash on top of everything else that we have. We have an Outcold. We have, we have a couple of two drops. So really, really liking this start. Now, what do we have in this pack? Um, not much. There's a V2 Gazi Inspector, though. I'm not a big fan of Coveted Falcon in general. If I have enchantment-based removal, it can be good. The Forensic Gadget here also is a little underwhelming. Uh, we don't have any artifacts, really, that we want to play. So I'm happy enough picking up V2 Gazi Inspector. If I wanted to splash more things, I would take the Gravestone Strider. But the Inspector is, is a nice way. It's a detective to go with the Inspector. And, um, and I think it, in decks that are looking to go a little long, it's just a nice two-drop to play for our decks. Definitely not the type of card that I want to be first picking, but happy enough. Ooh, this is interesting. I actually don't know what to take, right? What's better? They're both really good. I mean, one of them's a detective. I actually legitimately don't know. I'm going to take the cheaper card. They're both fantastic. But the Steam Core Scholar, I mean, draws you two cards, discard two cards. Sometimes discarding one helps you collect evidence. It's got flying and vigilance. So I'll take the Scholar, but let me know what you think. What do you like between the Scholar and the 4-4 Death Touch Haste creature? Both really good cards. Here I'll take Sample Collector. This could actually be a decent Sample Collector deck. We did just pick up Projector Inspector and Steam Core Scholar. So what we, and we have Intrude on the Mine. So I think we're going to have plenty of things in the graveyard for a card like the Sample Collector. And now we need some interaction, and we got it. Wow, look at this pack. There's a Makeshift Binding, but... Um, don't really need to splash that when I can simply just take Bite Down on Crime. We're a little bit light on interaction. We have a Reasonable Doubt and an Out Cold as really our only spells that interact with the opponent. This pack's actually pretty nice. I don't mind Fanatical Strength, Eliminate the Impossible, and Cold Case Cracker, but I think we really need to pick up a card like Bite Down on Crime, so I'm going to take it here. We also have a lot of ways to fill up our graveyard, so I do think this card is nice. And in this pack, Dramatic Accusation is a pretty weak removal spell, so I'd rather take the Escape Tunnel, because with the Escape Tunnel and the Nervous Gardener, potentially the Public Thoroughfare, although I really don't want to play this one if possible, that gives us outs to splashing some um, really powerful rares if we get a hold of it. Now I'm just going to take a 2-drop out of this pack in Sanitation Automaton. We are a little bit light on 2s. I'm going to lay out my deck like this, just so that we can see, out, see our deck. And right, right now we only have 4 2s. So that's precisely the reason why I chose to go with that. And now we have the choice. I don't really care about Drag the Canal on the Splash. So it's Deduce or Granite Witness. I don't mind Deduce. I like this more than, than most. So I will take the one copy of Deduce here over the group. We have a ton of threes already. So I'll just take the Deduce there. Oh, Evidence Examiner 8th pick. I almost missed that too. Wow, that is amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. This is one of my favorite uncommons in the set, and I'm really, really happy to have that card in my deck here. And now we have the choice between Forensic Gadgeteer and um, the Falcon. I'll take the Falcon, I guess. But hoping that I don't have to play it. Uh, I'm going to take... I'm actually going to take the Bubble Smuggler. I do like having one copy of Hotshot Investigators in most of my decks, but I, I think there's still maybe a small chance I won't pick up enough twos. So I'll just take the one copy of the Smuggler just to take for my deck. Oh, Cold Case Cracker tabled. And yeah, this deck is looking awesome. We have 18 playable cards that were... Oh, and we opened the best blue rare in the set. This deck is chock full of bombs. 
I'm here for it. I'm loving it. Cryptic code. Oh man, I've been cryptic coded so much. So I had the streak where I just kept losing to cryptic code and it was most the most infuri- infuriating thing ever. But now we get to do it to our opponents. Now we get to do it to our opponents. Let's take cryptic code out of that pack. And then hide in plain sight. Oh my gosh. This deck has so many bombs. There's a glint weaver in the pack. A forensic researcher is also okay. But we just went... Ugh. Okay. We, we have we got cryptic code into hide in plain sight. Pack one, we got Kellen into... What was it? Kellen into another busted card. I, I, I intruded on the mind. And then we got a Steam Core Scholar too. Oh, man. All right, this deck is looking awesome. Why don't we get a Vanifar? Doppelgang! Oh my gosh, we're getting everything! We're get- I mean, if somebody passes you, Kellen, I guess you get past Doppelgang. Oh my goodness, this pack is also incredible. Killer Among Us, locks that on Eavesdropper. But Doppelgang is the best Simic rare in the set, I believe. And I am happy to take it. If I can get a few more ways to ramp, that would be nice. Oh, and then Repulsive Mutation! I mean, I love me a Tunnel Tipster, but Repulsive Mutation is a bomb. So I'm going to take it over to Tipster, but I would love to have Tunnel Tipster in this deck as well. Oh my gosh, this deck just has so, so much power. I don't really think I want an extra Deduce. Do I want a Hedge Whisper or a Granite Witness out of this pack? Oh my goodness. I mean, look at this deck. This deck is awesome. I'll take a Hedge Whisperer in case I feel like I need another cheap creature. I don't know that I do. Here, I'll take a... Huh, Projector Inspector or V2Gazi Inspector? Which Inspector do I want? You know, I think I'm going to go with the V2Gazi Inspector just because I think my late game is just rock solid. And I just want cards that help me get to the late game. So let's take the V2Gazi Inspector there over the Projector Inspector. Um, I think they're both really good. Oh, we got a ramp spell. Got a ramp spell uh, between the two. Like I said, I think it's kind of close. But... We have a forensic. Re- I really wish I had more ways to like put lands into play, but sadly we don't. I don't think I need this. Gra- I'm not really splashing anything here. I'll take another crocodile, I guess. We'll take another bubble smuggler. No, I'll take a fanatical strength in case I feel like I need another combat trick. But yeah, do I magnifying glass here? Probably not. But this deck is looking awesome. We are a little bit light on interaction. But outside of that, I mean, we have so many rares. This deck has a lot of what you want. The only thing we're missing are just like, are just more ways to hit our land drops. Because if we're going to be playing Doppelgang, we don't want to miss on our land drops. All right. How do we want to build this deck? Um, I mean, we need to cut a lot of cards. Let's cut that magnifying glass. Maybe we just cut those cards. Cryptic Coat. Actually, I'm going to do it the other way here. Just because I have spells that act as creatures. Maybe cut the Snoop and the Falcon. These are all creatures. Um, can probably shave the Granite Witness. This is a face down card. Doppelgang goes all the way over here. Uh, we can just put it in the uh, that pile. And then Fanatical Strength. Nervous Gardener. I'd like to play on three if possible. We have... Nine threes, we can probably shave a crocodile. Can probably cut the the hedge whisper. Let's take a look and see if I still want another cheap play. That's kind of what I'm looking at. The sample collector. I don't know that I'm filling out my graveyard that quickly. So I think I can probably cut this. And I like I said, I have so many three mana cards. So let's cut that because I just kind of want more things to do early. So I think the deuce is gonna be nice to just keep the cards flowing so we hit our land drops and all that stuff and i might even just play a single copy of reasonable doubt good players tend to play around this card but it does give me another cheap thing to play and i think i can probably just cut another crocodile so i'll try this we're trying to keep the deck streamlined because i feel like i have a lot of late game power i have doppelgang hide in plain sight cryptic coat so i don't really need more large mana sync type cards like the detective i don't think so i just want to make sure that i have lots of stuff to do early to get to the late game all right so this hand has three lands we have hedge maze we did draw the reasonable doubt should be pretty good here don't want bubble smuggler so let's just put that in the graveyard 
Um, I have plenty of two mana cards I can play over the Bubble Smuggler. So we'll go with that instead. Turn one Thinking Cap, okay? Let's play Sanitation Automaton. Typically, the, when you play Evidence Examiner, you want to kind of be able to get value on it almost immediately. So the way that I want to sequence things out right now is turn two Automaton, turn three Forensic Researcher into um, the Evidence Examiner plus Reasonable Doubt. So I'm going to play the Forensic Researcher here. I know this is a big turn. If they play Projector Inspector, it's going to be pretty annoying. That's the only creature that's super duper annoying. Um, otherwise, we're looking okay. But just, I, please don't play Projector Inspector. They can equip Jaded Natalist and maybe cast Deduce or something, I guess. Case of the Filched Falcon. Okay. So they have two artifacts in play. One more to solve the clue. Now the Jaded Analyst is an excellent blocker. We don't have enough permanence in our graveyard right now to turn on the Evidence Examiner. We're still going to play it though. And we will uh, pass here. Alright, now we just need to draw one of our big expensive cards. Cryptic Coat. Hide in plain sight. Intrude on the mind. Doppelgang. A lot of those effects. What was the card that we cut? It was... Oh, the Undercover Crocodile. Yeah, it would be good here. Not gonna lie. I mean, even the Bubble Smuggler wouldn't be terrible here. But I wanted to fill up my graveyard just so that I could um, find things with Evidence Examiner and I just have a lot other... I just have much better cards. I anticipated drawing something. <laughs> and right now we haven't. Interesting. So our opponent drew a card and is now can now attack with the Jaded Analyst. The question is if they attack, do we block? Just to be able to make a clue? I'm tempted to. Yeah. I actually don't mind this block. Just because I, I'm at this point I'm just like I'm just looking to get to the late game here. And um I'm looking to get to the late game. So we can actually tap this creature now. Exile these two. Collect evidence. We can attack. Draw a card with the clue. And try to find something. Ooh, and that's a hide in plain sight. That's perfect. That is perfect. So we're going to play hide in plain sight. We're going to put, so I'm going to explain this again because everybody always seems to ask me this question. The reason why I choose permanence or spells is so that I have more things to collect evidence with when the face down creatures die. This is a question I've been asked many, many times. So just want to let you all know that's the reason why. Don't need to collect evidence this turn. I do want to keep up reasonable doubt. Actually, this is a defender, right? It'd be kind of funny if I cast Reasonable Doubt on, on this next play and then made it so that the Jaded Analyst can't block. I think that's the play. I mean, they have to play something here. We have so much on the board. I guess they could galvanize my Evidence Examiner. That would be annoying. Yeah, we're countering that. So let's do this. Let's cast Reasonable Doubt and suspect the Jaded Analyst. <laughs> can't block! Can't block. Sorry. And now what do we do? Um, let's see. Let me hold full control here. I, the thing is I can use this to tap permanence. So I think that's what I want to do. I don't need to collect evidence because I can collect evidence with the forensic researcher. So let's just not do this. Decline. And then let's attack with our three creatures on the right. Play a cold case cracker. Tap something down. Make a clue with the evidence examiner. And then uh, draw a card. Things are looking very good for us. If they want to attack with Jaded Analyst, go for it. I mean, you got to play something. Oh, the, the post-combat red herring. Oh, there it is. There's, a, there's the good card. 
Oh, and they got to they get to solve the the case. All right, so let's. What do we tap? It could just be the red herring. I mean, this trades with everything anyways, and I get to draw a clue a card off the clue if I do that. So let's do that. Let's draw a card off the clue. See what it can be. Out cold. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, that's enough. Sure. J j just for extra value, you know what I mean? All right. Got that one done. Evidence examiner was incredible. Forensic researcher also decent. They work well together. Ooh, that was a big jump. We went from 20 to 15. 20 to 15. Let's keep it going. I'm already trying to think about what this title is going to be. Just all the rares. All the Simic rares. <laughs> okay, what does this hand look like? We have a, a V2 Gazi Inspector. That's great. We're on the draw. Ooh, turn two Kellen uh, Explore, though, is very good. Do I want the Forensic Researcher? Huh. I think I just want to fuel my graveyard. So I'm going to bottom... I'm going to put that in the graveyard. I already have a three. But like I said, the... Ooh. They did play an Innocent Bystander, which makes me want to... Um, just play the V2 Gazi Inspector just to shore up the beatdowns. But I can, the thing, the problem, the thing is, I can play this later and I can collect the evidence and I can just play Kellen instead. I think I'm just going to do that. Like this, this ramps me as well. That's also really good. So let's just do that. We can play Kellen next turn. And if they kill it, they kill it. That's fine. Ooh, Pompous Gadabout. That's not bad. We have Sanitation Automaton as a play that can block the Gadabout. I can also just play Kellen. I'm just going to play Kellen. If they kill this, they kill this. If they kill this, we can follow it up. Okay, that's an Axe Bane Ferox. Okay. That's fine. No blocks. I mean, it's not super fine. I mean, we're taking a beating. Let's attack. Let's kill our clue. Draw a card. They take three. And then now we have decisions. Now we have decisions. We're at 10 life. I think it's going to be too difficult to keep up the repulsive mutation. So face up vengeful creeper seems best here. Alternatively, I can play Sanitation Automaton and keep up Repulsive Mutation. I'm just going to play a face-up Creeper. And this is a bit of a shields down moment, admittedly. But I'm hoping that playing this 5-5 will help stabilize the board. Now, it looks like they're targeting my creature, so this could be a bite down. Looks like they have a combat trick here. Now the question is, what kind of combat trick? This makes me want to block the Gadabout, because if they have plus 3, plus 3 in Trample... I take way too much damage from the Ferox. So I'm going to block the Gadabout. And if they have the chases on, that's really bad. It looks like it's just a burn spell. Okay. So Axebane Ferox is definitely a problem. Um, and I don't have the... The problem is I just don't have the best blocks for it. They have two cards in hand. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what I have to do. So what I'm thinking here is I'm going to go V2 Gazi Inspector and make a 4 or 5 Kellen. And I have so much action in my hand. I'm going to trade my Kellen for the Ferox. I'm going to attack here first, of course. But I gain some life. I have a 1-3 here, which is really nice against the Bystander. And I still get to keep up Repulsive Mutation if they happen to have a trick, right? If they happen to have a Drick, I still have rep Repulsive Mutation. And what's going to end up happening is that it's still just going to be a clean trade here. But I'm at 8, so I think I just have to do it.
Topiary Panther, we're definitely just going to counter this. Do it for one. Target a creature I control. Target their spell. Counter their thing. Make a 2-4. All right. We are now on the verge of stabilizing. Actually, I think we just stabilized. We're going to attack. And then we can go Sanitation Automaton plus Cryptic Coat. Don't need to bite the bystander. Do I want this land? I actually kind of do. With the Cryptic Coat, I want a bunch of mana. And if I by drawing the land, I can go Cold Case Cracker into Bite Down on Crime. Oh, what am I saying? <laughs> I turned it into a land. All right. Anyways. Um, I mean, we're kind of in, a, in, a, in the spot where we can just... Oh, let, let's do that the other way. Let's block here. Let's block there. I mean, they have some kind of a trick. It doesn't really matter, though. Okay, if they don't have a trick, it also doesn't really matter. Okay. Let's attack for two. We can go Cold Case Cracker. Bounce the Cryptic Coat. Everything's looking fine and dandy. All right, they are escaping here. Okay, V2 Gazi Inspector, sure. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know if I'm ever going to cast this Deduce because I'm just happy enough playing 3-2 Unblockable Creature. Now the question is, do I want to kill the V2 Gazi Inspector? Or do I just lean on the power of Cryptic Coat? They're at 11 life. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do it. 4, 5, 6... Yeah, let's beat down. Play one way. We play too many bombs. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. Sorry, Luke. All right. Rank 13 now with our bomb-laden Simic deck. I mean, I don't know. I don't think I've had... I don't think I've had as many top-tier cards in a deck as this one. Once again, Intrude on the Mine, Kellen, Hide in Plain Sight, Doppelgang. And I mean, look, Repulsive Mutation is almost kind of on that level too. Okay, 2-0. and oh. We are on the play. Hey, we got... <laughs> on the play? In, uh, uh, playing Tail the Suspect on Kellen just seems unfair, right? This just seems completely unfair. Just turn 3-3-4 three, three, Flying Vigilance. I accept. I accept. Wow. Our hand is great. So here, if they attack us, do we block? I think the answer is no. We're at 18. And when Kellen attacks, we can kill the, he the red herring. Now, if they have makeshift binding, they're obviously just going to cast it here. All right. So they did have the makeshift binding, which is unfortunate. We still got the ramp. But we still have some decent plays. That is a doppelgang, which is pretty good. I think I'm just going to play Bubble Smuggler and Evidence Examiner here. And happy enough trading the Bubble Smuggler with the Red Herring. And I'm kind of trying to get um, a little more value with my V2 Gazi Inspector if possible. Person of Interest, okay? So now we can cast um, Bite Down on Crime. Not sure that we do. Maybe we do. So we can cast Bite Down on Crime on the detective and attack for two. Or do we want to kill the menace creature and just preserve our life total? I think I want to just kill the menace creature. I don't think I'm too concerned about my life total here. And I'm not, I'm going to decline here. Basically, they get a one turn window to kill my evidence examiner. But I, I, I think I might even value the plus one, plus one counter on there more. Ooh, but they did. So this is a little more tempting because they turned this into a 4 2, but I'm still going to take it, I think. Another line here is to potentially doppelgang for. One on Offender at Large, but I'm going to refrain from doing that for now. Let's draw a card off this clue. See if we find something better. 
Okay, we found a deduce. I'm going to go ahead and play the inspector. Exile these two. Then I'll put a counter on the inspector. And we will pass. No attacks. Do need to find an, uh, an answer for the offender at large. This is a bit of a precarious spot. If they have a combat trick, it's pretty brutal. So I might need to go ahead and just take five. We'll see. Due diligence. Okay. Well, now this is... Okay. This is a lot of damage. Are we kind of on chump block duty at this point? I can double block this, and then they can just completely blow me out. I think I do, though. Yeah. They had they had due diligence plus a combat. Oh, Felonious Rage is good, but it's it's it can be worse. We actually got the 4-4 off the battlefield, and then they replaced it with a 2-2. This is still a lot that we need to fight through. Would like to be able to find some creature to block. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I mean, they... Yeah, okay. Oh, that buys us time. That buys us time. So that we can set up for a doppelgang for two. Um, so I can't play the Forensic Researcher. I just need to crack this clue and really hope to find a land. Okay, we found a land. We found a land. Um, okay. We're, we're okay. All right, they're in combat. Let's target... Um, these two. I don't want them to loot. If they drew something, obviously they drew something. And we did not find a land, sadly. But we have Forensic Researcher, and that's good enough. And I'm not going to actually crack these clues because the Researcher itself get, allows me to cast Doppelganger for two, which I will use to copy Makeshift Binding and Offender at large. And by keeping up as much mana as possible, I now have a mana leak available, potentially. All right, let's draw a card. And we found the land, yes! We found the land! Oh, that's a hide in plain sight, too. Oh my gosh, let's do it. One, two. Target this and this. Auto pay. <laughs> okay uh i don't know and our opponent scooped it up Ooh, they had a nice aggressive start but doppelgang is busted and al cold bought us just enough time to get us to that point so really great start our opponent did their best with their commons and such but our rares were just simply too powerful Okay, we have now cracked the top 12. We're out of the teens. We're out of the teens. We're now 12th. We're going first. Solid hand. I'm going to go he turn one hedge mage. If I find an expensive thing, I guess I'm definitely putting a land in the yard. But if I found a, like a six drop, I could have put it in the yard to make a turn two V2 Gazi inspector. Another thinking cap. Turn you know, I don't really like thinking cap very much. I'm surprised so many people are playing it. It's a blue-red deck. Reckless Detective. Okay, that is good. Reckless Detective is good with a thinking cap. Um, so I can play Vengeful Creeper, but I'm actually just going to go with uh, Steam Core Scholar here. Draw two. And uh, let's discard the... kind of like all my lands. I think we'll have plenty to do with our mana. So I'll discard the Cold Case Cracker just because I have Hide in Plain Sight. And with cards, with my other bombs in my deck, um, I like just being, even like being up lands as a resource is not bad. All right, Reckless Detective with the Thinking Cap getting in. No blocks. Was this their turn three? Did they have a turn two? They have an, oh, they did have a play. I was like, did they have a play here? This Vengeful Creeper is going to be pretty good. All right, what do we find? Oh, oh, oh. oh, Bubble Smuggler Hide in Plain Sight is insane. So I don't want to put those two, so I'll just do these two. Oh, yeah. So for those of you that don't know, 
For those of you that don't know the interaction, I can flip up Bubble Smuggler for two mana, and it'll be a 6-5. Pretty pretty insane, right? Pretty insane. They might need to be on the defensive here now. Do I attack with everything? Certainly the Flyer. And the Bubble Smuggler. Yeah, let's attack. They don't know what we can have. They, they're taking it all. <laughs> Boom. Maybe this is an out cold situation. Definitely could be. But Vengeful Creeper with all this mana also going to be good. And we just got so much mana worth of stats. I mean, that hide in plain sight got us a 6-5 and a 2-2 two -two for 6 mana. Not bad. Not bad. It's like a, like a mini Tulsimir. A Tulsimir that I played a turn earlier. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I forgot we had the Scholar too. That is another rare. Oh, it's getting tough, by the way. We just won, and we, we're still ranked 12. But this, uh, we're drawing really well here, not going to lie. We are 4-0 with our Simic Bombs dot deck. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Rank 12. What is this hand? This hand, it's fine. We got a 2. We got a 2. And the Forensic Researcher will ramp us into Intrude on the Mind. Our opponent played a Vengeful Tracker. Okay, we got a blocker for that. And then Sanitation Automaton. Get us a green source. Ooh, forest. I'll keep that on top. I don't mind all the extra lands with the intrude. This is easy block. Lamplight Phoenix is phenomenal. That's a really good card. Um, I'm going to play Forensic Researcher here. Might need to bite down on crime on the Lamplight Phoenix before they can collect evidence. We'll see what they play this turn, though. Because if I intrude on the mine, I'm going to get either a 3-3 or a 2-2 flyer anyways. Gadget Technician. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to play this a little bit controlling. I'm going to play this a little bit controlling here. So I'm going to play out this land. Let's just kill the, um, the Lamplight. Okay. I just I just don't want to have that in play. Now do I attack with this forensic researcher? I feel like I kind of prefer having the mana here. Although trading with a gadget technician on this board doesn't seem that bad, honestly. Yeah, let's attack. All right. We have tap available for a future turn. I kind of want to um ambush this flyer with intrude on the mind. So let's go ahead and do that. It's an instant, right? Okay. I've never cast this card before. The deuce. Now, they can have reasonable doubt. And if they do, that, that would be pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to tap the gadget technician. Let's play Intrude on the Mind. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, holy cow. Maybe like Doppelgang plus... Certainly splitting Doppelgang and Cryptic Coat. Is it like this? Sure. Sure. <laughs> what is that pile? All right. They didn't give us Doppelgang. They didn't give us Doppelgang. All right. So they hit us with Bubble Smuggler. That's a pretty big attack. Um, We can tap it down next turn, though. Let's play the Scholar. 
We have a lot of stuff to filter through if we want. Yeah, let's just discard uh, some lands here. And then we can play Cryptic Coat. Uh, ooh, we actually hit something. I mean, it's not a great thing to hit. And let's attack with our flyer. So how many times can we tap? We have one. We can tap twice. I think that was the correct split. Should it have been like doppelgang plus land versus three spells? I don't know. All right, so bite down on crime here. Let's go ahead and tap the bubble smuggler. And let's exile these two. And then they're probably going to attack with the technician, which is okay. What do I block with? Is it the scholar or the, the cryptic coat thing? I guess it's just the scholar. Sure. You, you, you're, their, their deck is chock full of tricks. Okay. So we might want to actually play a bit more of a controlling game now, now that we have the Cryptic Coat. So I'm actually going to play Cold Case Cracker and try to double block the Bubble Smuggler. And the longer the game goes, the better it is for us. So you know what? What I actually should have done because of that, I, I just didn't think about it. I didn't plan ahead. Because um, I'm at 7. I didn't plan ahead. I should have, um, I should have blocked with the Cryptic Coat card. So that I could have a 2-2 flying vigilance creature, maybe. But if they just draw all spells with the six cards, like, I mean, this is still pretty slow. It's five mana to make a 2-2. And we've drawn all lands now. There's four lands left in our deck. How do we get Doppelgang back in our deck? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. I could have been a little bit more aggressive had they not used, you know, the bite down on crime plus eliminate the impossible to really whittle down my board. So they've done a really good job of kind of keeping our board clean. All right, they're cracking a clue. Yeah, I think I'm just on block everything. I mean, we'll see what they do. They could have a bite spell here, I guess. Another bite spell. Okay, detonation on this, okay. I mean, we're definitely double blocking the, sm the bubble smuggler unless they have another removal spell. Oh my gosh. Do you really? Do you really have another removal spell? Yep. It's a... No, no. It's just a... V oh! That gets... They get to put a counter on the bubble smuggler. Oh, interesting. Okay. They can also do that. That is certainly something they can do. All right. Let's kill the smuggler. We'll go to three. We'll bounce Cryptic Coat. The Cryptic Coat will be able to trade with the Gadget Technician. But we're at 3 life, dealing with a Technician and a V2Gazi Inspector. And we just drew Cold Case Cracker, which is nice. It's just another good threat. That can trade with the Gadget Technician. So we'll play it. They just need to, like... You just need to draw some lands here. Just... Just chill for, like, give me one turn. I'm just asking for one turn. Let me develop my board a little bit here. Oh, I didn't even, I should have looked at what my face down card was. That was a mistake. It is a repulsive mutation. Would have rather drawn that card. I, what is, what, what is up with their mana? They're, are you, are they splashing V2 Gazi Inspector? What's, ha what's happening? Okay, so that was a really good draw. I'm going to play this first. All right, Nervous Gardener. And now I don't think I care about the collecting evidence, so I'd rather just draw those cards over the land. So we'll do that. Play my land. And I'm going to attack with my Flyer and my Face Down card here because this is unblockable. And then I can pick up Cryptic Coat and replay it. 
we shall do that. Now we can start turning things around and getting in. We'll still have three blockers, so it's going to be really hard for them to get damage in. Let's activate Cryptic Coat. Make sure we don't mill ourselves. And it is back in play. Third 11 life. That was the one turn, hopefully, that we needed to stabilize. Topiary Panther is gigantic, though. That is gigantic. I would love to draw out cold. We drew out cold. <laughs> Those were good draws. Those were definitely good draws. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. To bounce Cryptic and play it costs 5 mana. And out cold can't be countered, right? Oh, wait! I didn't look! I should have looked! Four damage? Oh my gosh, I should have flipped that over. Oh, that was... Okay, well, now I gotta look at all my face down cards. Anyways, we drew out cold here. We're gonna tap down the Gadget Technician and the Topiary Panther, and this should lock it up. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh my gosh. Was that lethal? That wasn't lethal. But I could have flipped that up instead of bouncing my Cryptic Coat and deal like a ton more damage. All right. Let's just tap down the biggest things. And we managed to stabilize. Woo! It took every last one of our rares, but we got there. Number 11. This deck is so busted. This deck is so broken. I've never had this much power in my hands. Getting very close to cracking the top 10. How does our hand look? It's a little bit... I mean, I got a 2-drop and a 3-drop. We just gotta believe. We just gotta believe. We gotta believe that the cards on top of our deck are awesome. Just gotta hope we don't get flooded out here. We are on the draw, and our opponent went turn 1 Novice Inspector. So their win rate went up 10%. Okay, so that was a really good draw. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna... That was... A plus. Cryptic Coat, not bad. Not bad. I had all this mana and I needed something to do with it, and this is the perfect, perfect way to answer that. So blue-white detectives, it looks like, from the opponent. And are they passing or are they playing a two-drop? Would rather they pass. And that was weird. There was like a bit of a delay, so maybe they have reasonable doubt, but... They're going to crack their clue. They're probably playing something here. And we just drew another rare hide in plain sight. Okay. So hopefully we can keep up with what they have. The card that I'm really worried about is Private Eye. But we do have Bite Down on Crime. So we just have to be pretty careful with what we choose to use Bite Down on Crime on. If they're playing a Blue-White Detective's deck. Because that's how I've lost before. Okay, well. Now this is a Gleaming Gear Drake. That I did not expect. And we can choose to play either the Cryptic Coat here or the Forensic Researcher. The thing is, do I really need the mana from the Researcher right now? I think I'd rather just play a 3-2 Unblockable and hit Bubble Smuggler. Okay, it was Island. Because look, I mean, next turn we just go Hide in Plain Sight. Hide in Plain Sight, beat down. And and then if we get enough permanence in our graveyard, then we can maybe go like Forensic Researcher into Bite Down on Crime. Oh, wow. All right, so they just went Gear Drake into Satchel. What are they doing? <laughs> okay. So this Gear Drake can potentially be really big. And I mean, Satchel is one of the best cards and it's going to be hard to fight through. But we will try our best. And I think the best way to do it is just maximum pressure. Hide in plain sight. Let's go with deduce and, I don't know, just a land, I guess. And let's try to outrace what they have going on. Cryptic Coat at least guarantees that I'm going to be able to deal three points of damage every turn. And then if they decide to kind of go all in on Gear Drake 
and make it huge, well, we can bite down on crime. What is their splash? I don't, all my opponents, like, I'm trying to figure out how my opponents play their cards. Like, if you're not a green base deck, like, how, what, what is, identify the splash. Is it Novice Inspector? Case of the Filched Falcon. Okay. I mean, their deck is, their deck is pretty awesome. Not going to lie. Okay. This gets in. I mean, let's just, let's just get in. Oh, that's really good. Uh, blo them blocking the deduce card is really good because it allows me to um, cast bite down on crime on the gear drake, which I think I want to do. Um, I can play the researcher to give me more mana over the V2 Gazi inspector. I think I want to do that. All right, G Gleaming Gear Drake down. They have Case of the Filch Falcon, though. We're at 19. We have Cryptic Coat going. I mean, this makes a 4-4, but this also becomes a 4-4. And we do have... Fortunately, we also have some Reach Creatures. Good to block. Next turn, we have access to 6 mana. So I can play Cold Case Cracker plus the Inspector if I need. Cornered Crook. Wow, that's really good. Are they going to kill my... Re They're probably killing my Researcher, right? And they get a 1-1 one, one Flyer here. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, they have a really good blue-red deck. This Novice Inspector makes zero sense still. I stand by that. But let's go ahead and attack with the Unblockable. Going to jam Cold Case Cracker here. And um, we do have Out Cold as a way to try to race them on top of that. I mean, this is just a nice threat. The thing is, if they, especially if they, um, if they animate their clue and try to get aggressive, then we, we have the answer there. It is interesting if they just pass. Like, do I want... I don't know if I want to attack with Cold Case Cracker. I might wait then. But if they activate now and attack... I mean, I'm at 19, so I can't afford to take some damage. The five here we will take. Cold case. Okay, well, we can't attack anymore. All right. Land would be good here. Great. Because then I can play V2 Gazi Inspector. And um, also out cold. I am curious whether or not it's correct. Ooh, uh, no, that's not good. I'm curious whether or not it's correct to put a counter on V2 Gazi Inspector or on the Cryptic Coded card. Putting it on this puts it, uh, makes it a three-turn clock. Yeah, I'm interested in that. And then we can out-cold the Cold Case Cracker and the Cornered Crook next turn. Hopefully they're running out of stuff. I mean, they have... Satchel just does so much work. Face down card, okay. So what do I want to tap down? I actually think it might be the face down card. I don't know what this card can be. I'm not really going to be able to attack with Cold Case Cracker anyways. And we can still keep attacking with the Cryptic Coat, but it's getting a little bit dicey, but this is going to buy us some amount of time. So the nice thing here is I can still attack for four this turn, unblockable. Get them down to three. If I don't draw anything, I can still just bounce Cryptic Coat and replay it. Oh, it's an exit specialist. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Okay, so that, that, that was an, an incredible draw for them. Or an incredible play, rather. They don't have a great attack. Okay. So I have access to 8 mana. I think I want to draw a card with this clue. And I still have the mana to bounce Cryptic Coat and replay it. 
Oh, that's really good. I don't know that I want to use it just yet, though. I think I kind of want to use it next turn, because I just want to Cryptic Coat this turn. I don't have a lethal attack with the Fanatical Strength, so I just want to make sure I have an unblockable creature in play. And I'm going to pass. We'll see what they do, but they're at 7 life. We've got Cryptic Coat going. We've got some blockers. They didn't make a Thopter last turn. Did they sack an artifact? Maybe they didn't. Three mana. Okay. Case of the Filch Falcon is now a 4-4. Four four. Oof. It's getting dicey. It's getting dicey. They didn't crack a clue yet. I don't want the Cold Case Cracker. Okay. So they're attacking me for seven. What do they have? I think I take it. I, actually, I, I mean, I can prevent four damage. Yeah, let's, let's preserve our life total here. And see what they're going to do. Wow. Krenko's Buzz Crusher. Okay. Um, I don't think we're dead next turn. Uh, let's see. If I attack with Cold Case Cracker, how are they blocking? Probably with the Buzz Crusher. Maybe with the tokens as well. I mean, let's play Projector Inspector, and we can still just find what we need, potentially. Yeah, let's attack. Because this allows us to cast Fanatical Strength to attack through what they have, and then still play Nervous Gardener. They're going to be like, what the heck is this attack? So they're going to have to block with the Buzz Crusher. Okay. So now we trample over, and that's lethal. Woo! That was, a, that was a really good game. That was a really good game. A lot of back and forth. Our opponent had a really, really great satchel deck. And now we're in the top 10, folks! Top 10? In the top 10, 6-0. Just played against an awesome Is It deck. And now we're playing for the perfect 7-0. Can we get the perfect 7-0 into the top 9? We'll see. Uh, mediocre hand and our opponent's going first. I'm going to keep this. I have the Nervous Gardener here. I just need a land. Okay, I drew the land. Uh, they're playing an aggressive red-white deck, though. Let's hope they don't have a two-drop. I'm sure they do, though. Okay. Do I, pl do I have to play this Nervous Gardener turn two? Yeah, I, th I th you know, I think I have to. With the turn two red herring, I think if I just don't play anything there, I just straight up lose. Would have loved to just draw an island to play the Smuggler. But we're still just hoping to naturally draw Island. This was a bit of an awkward hand, definitely. Could have shipped this one back. But next turn, we can go face down Bubble Smuggler. So we basically have two turns to try to draw out of this. Island. Island. Not an island. Yeah, this is rough. We drew V2 Gazi Inspector. Need an island very badly. Like, if we draw an island, our hand is completely fine. We just play Cold Case Cracker and we're good. Due diligence. Oh, okay. Sadness. Sadness, Overload, no Island. Okay. Look, we've drawn pretty well, admittedly, throughout the course of this run. And sometimes you just, you're going to lose. And this is definitely one of those games. Uh, we need a land here badly. Okay. So that at least is a start because that allows us to eat Aurelia. And we still didn't find an island. Can't attack. They have two cards in hand. No blocks. The thing is just like, at this point, they just have just so much more mana and a better board. Oh, they're going to torch to try to find some action. Sure. Just like we... 
Just okay. So that was an island. Cold case cracker. Here we go. We're gonna double block and hope they have nothing. <laughs> Okay. All right, we're going to take three. No, you can't, you can't just play another creature there. That is not cool. Okay, we drew a three, four. We'll play that. So now we can block the consultant and the bystander. And they, have, they had no cards in hand. Oh, I think they're just reading our card. We can block the Consultant with the Kellen and block Innocent Bystander with Cold Case Cracker. If we draw an Island next turn, we definitely just run out Intrude on the Mind. But we're at two against Boros. They have great cards. I mean, Torch the Witness, Aurelia, Case of the Burning Masks. Like, at any point, our opponent can draw Shock and kill us. Yeah, okay. I mean... It has to be. Although, at that point, you can just attack with the bystander. You don't have to attack with the consultant. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I can play Projector, Inspector, or Deduce. Deduce draws me two cards. But Projector... If, but if I don't find an island, it's pretty bad. But I'm drawing two cards. Like, I can find an island or a green card, right? Let's play Deduce. Wow, if we don't draw something here, though. <laughs> okay, good. <sighs> okay, let's uh, let's make a two four here as well. Um, four five six. Okay, we're at four now. We don't die to shock. Crovod Haunch. Okay, they're probably gonna want to go wide here. I'm definitely double blocking the consultant if they attack. With my cold case cracker and the inspector. Yeah, I think they're going to crack it. I think they're going to crack it. I mean, they have to, right? Because I get to just kill it. Now, do I want projector inspector or forensic, res uh, forensic researcher? Let's play the, re uh, the inspector. It's just a bigger creature that can trade with the consultant. I could also draw an island. That was not an island, but it was close. All right, let's attack with Kellen. Kill the haunch, I guess. All right. Let's play the hedge maze for the second blue source. And uh, I'll take the scholar, definitely. All right, we're at four life. Four life here. Uh, on the job would be very, very bad. So let's just make sure we make the appropriate blocks for on the job. Um, the appropriate blocks for on the job are this and this. And then I guess like this and this. I mean, I have to block everything. Okay. They get to flip case of the burning masks. That's good. All right, it's now my turn. Whoo, this is close one. This is a close one. I'm gonna attack with Kellen. Let's eat my clue for free. Let's get in. And do I wanna play the scholar? I don't think so. I'm just gonna play researcher and intrude on the mine. All right, crack case. Is there a four damage burn spell? I sure hope not. All right, it's a thinking cap and a red herring. So they're going to probably get red herring, but we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Doing a really... I Man, I thought we were so dead. <laughs> oh, we are in the process of stabilizing here. All right, thinking cap. Thinking cap is good. Yeah, no, that is nice, because now I kind of have to chump block. Or I'll probably double block. It's a 4-7. 
So let's cast this. Four lands. Four four lands versus repulsive mutation. All right, let's do that. <laughs> if they give me four lands, I get a four four flyer, or I get repulsive mutation and I and I lock up the game. If I I felt like if I did two and three, they just give me repulsive. Yep, they give me four lands. So I got a four. Oh no, I get a one one flyer. Whoops. Oh, they drew the shock. Oh my gosh, they drew the shock. That's crazy. All right, we got to just jump lock like this. We have plenty of food now just to tap with the forensic researcher. Oh, evidence examiner too? Oh my gosh. All right, well, let's lead things off with Steam. I'm gonna, should I edit that out? Uh, okay. Decline. <laughs> let's play. Oh my gosh. Talk about getting tongue-tied. Play Evidence Examiner. I mean, we have so much food here, right? We can just remove this and still tap so we can just get multiple clues. Let's attack here. Let's kill the Thinking Cap. And we don't even need to use the Out Cold. We can just go ahead and tap this. Uh, for three? Oh, man. I'm feeling it. The comeback here. The comeback. Hide in plain sight. Great. We have ten cards left. Okay. Let's just make sure we don't deck ourselves. Fanatical strength. Reasonable doubt. Okay, let's exile a four drop. Do we have a four drop? Let's exile two of these. Three, four, five, six, seven. Let's kill our clue. And let's go for it. Oh no! Oh, I didn't do the math right! I thought. <laughs> oh, I put my hands up for no reason! Why did I. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am. I am not the smartest. <laughs> I am not the smartest. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and tap this. Good game. Good game. They shocked themselves. Oh, they drew the second shock. Oh my gosh, how close was this? How close was this? I am still in disbelief that we were able to win this one. And we are now in single digits. We are in single digits. Oh my goodness. What an incredible run. The perfect 7-0. The perfect 7-0. We are streaking. We are on a nice hot streak here. Blue-green, I said it before, just draft green. It's usually underdrafted. And this deck was phenomenal. I mean, look at our bombs. Like, hide in plain sight. Here, let's just hide in plain sight bomb. Kellen bomb. Repulsive mutation. Intrude on the mine. Steam core scholar. Uh, cryptic coat. I mean, you literally just have six... Doppelgang. We had seven first pickable cards, all with like 60 plus percent win rates. These are all just completely ridiculous cards. And we got most of it passed to us. We made sure that we had enough things to do early so that in the late game, we can take over with the inevitability that these cards provided. But you saw the power of those cards. Super happy about this once again. And we are now ninth place. Ninth, there's only eight slots to go to hit rank one. I know here, even in the top 10, it's going to be a big, it's going to, there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be sometimes, especially around rank four or five, where you're going to have to win three or four in a row just to even go up a rank. But I mean, we're, 
it's well within our reach now. We are ninth place. Ninth place, didn't expect it. This is the best deck. This is the best deck that I've drafted in this format. Not close. Before I sign off, once again, I want to shout out all the patrons of the Patreon channel. If you did enjoy this content and wanted to support uh, my channel, you can definitely check it out on Patreon. You'll get Discord access and also uh, access to a private monthly video that I plan on making. That's something that I'm planning on doing in March. So if you're interested in the Patreon, check it out. Description in the link below. Thank you for stopping by. Really appreciate it. And I'll catch you tomorrow.